Help. They've kidnapped me. Lady Die. By Slobber Dan Die of My Trick. Prologue The Drifter. Not The Night Watch by Rembrandt Van Rijn. Despite the fact that the Dutch call early September autumn. It is still summer. The garden of the Amsterdam Rijksmuseum is, on this late summer day September 4, 1997, almost deserted. On a bench near the medieval gate sits an old English Cambridge professor together with a female colleague of about the same age. He is peeling an egg and she an orange. From a large thermos flask they pour tea into plastic cups. From Stadhoudskade they hear the cello music of a retired teacher from the Amsterdam Conservatory, who on this Saturday afternoon wants to earn a little extra to cover her expenses. Her pension is not enough to survive. She complains to passers-by in this beautiful city of tulips where living is becoming more expensive day by day. She plays well, comments the lady professor. The old man puts his hand behind his ear. What? Beautiful music, his colleague shouts. The old professor brushes the comment aside, pulls a grumpy face and offers her a peeled egg. Here, thank you very much. And are you? The old man shows her another egg. I have one too, lured by the smell of food. A bunch of wild ducks leaves a small fountain and waddles towards the old couple. The female professor makes crumbs to feed the ducks. Don't, shouts the professor. How often must I tell you that bread is bad for birds? Because of the salt and yeast in the bread, adds the old lady. That's right. But you know, dear, smiles the lady. What is even worse for the birds? No, hunger. The man shrugs, takes a salt shaker from his pocket and puts some salt on his egg. Want some? No, thank you very much. My kidneys, you know. My doctor has forbidden me to eat salt. Ah, all these young unsalted intellectuals. What does it matter at our age? Salt it, woman. The lady accepts the salt shaker and salts the egg. Our young man has not arrived yet. The man pulls a silver timepiece from a waistcoat pocket and opens the lid. There are still five minutes to go, asterisk a rather fat. Fifty-year-old vagabond parks his bicycle with a trailer containing twenty loaves of bread, a dozen empty beer bottles and a pile of old newspapers next to the bench of the Cambridge professors. Can I sit next to you? No, the old man snaps. The drifter grabs a loaf of bread and hands it to the female professor. Maybe I can pay for my seat. The female professor accepts the bread. The professor takes it away from her and handing it back to the drifter points to an empty bench. Young man, please, go and sit over there. The drifter breaks the bread into large chunks and throws them to the ducks. Then, he says, there on that bench is not the night watch by Rembrandt Van Rijn, that doesn't interest us. Please, go away, the old fellow shouts. Pulling her colleague's sleeve, the old lady whispers. That's him. The professor throws a disgruntled look at the drifter. What did you say? The fellow sits down beside them. Well, I said, there on the bench is not the night watch by Rembrandt Van Rijn. The old man looks at him in disbelief. The password is fine, but how is it possible that they sent this awfully dirty, arrogant wizard to them? But why did you disguise yourself like this? The drifter smiles. You probably expected a clean-shaven and smartly dressed macho. Who says I am in disguise? This is my status quo now, but that is none of your business, of course. Okay. Tell me, what you want to know, I don't have that much time. God knows how many birds I still have to feed today. Bread is not good for birds, says the professor angrily. The bread has too much salt and yeast in it, adds his female colleague. The drifter points to the bread in the trailer. This is holy bread without salt and yeast, he quips. It rises by itself. Oh, the Cambridge scientists remark, somewhat surprised. The drifter gets up, goes to his trailer and takes two round loaves and a large piece of roast beef. He puts everything in a plastic bag, walks back to sit on the bench and offers the bag to the lady professor. 
Here is something for your journey home. Thank you. Where did you get that from? Inquires the old man. From the most expensive shop in Amsterdam, on PC Hoofstraat, the drifter says truthfully. I don't understand. This is for my hungry birds and the homeless in Amsterdam. The boss of the shop. His wife and young daughter are atheists. But since they got to know me they've started believing in God. Asterisk the professor takes a piece of paper from his worn out briefcase and hands it to the drifter. Take a look at this. The drifter looks at the scribbles and waves his hands. Sorry, but I can't read those scribbles in whatever language. Scribbles, handwritten letters. The Cambridge researchers stare at each other. How is it possible, the professor says, that they've chosen an illiterate person to help you, adds the drifter. Yes, the couple say in unison, that you're going to ask those who sent you to me. But let's not waste any more time. Please read it to me. The professor adjusts his glasses and clears his throat. Dum, dum, is that what it says? The drifter jokes. The professor looks up. Dum, what do you mean? That, dum, him. The professor threatens with his forefinger. Young man, show some politeness. The drifter continues to crack jokes. What young man? I'm 50. The professor seizes the opportunity to tease the drifter. But mentally you seem five to me. The drifter laughs. Well judged. Mentally five but physically fifty. That means, my dear friend, that by biblical standards I have the right to speak. Come on please, read it. The old man adjusts his glasses again, coughs and reads, help. They've kidnapped me. Lady Di, is that all? The professor folds the paper. That's all. What is your opinion? Asks the female professor. Are these scribbles original? Of course not, shouts her male counterpart. It's a photocopy. The original is in a safe, says the lady professor. The original was written in the blood of Diana. Put in a champagne bottle and then tossed from a yacht cabin into the sea. The professors stare at each other in dead silence. After some time, the professor asks with a stern voice. How do you know that? The drifter spreads his hands and grimaces. What, for God's sake, that, that this letter was written in blood? Put in a champagne bottle and tossed into the sea. I'm joking, man. That's impossible, exclaims the lady professor. You mentioned three details that could only be known to the princess are those who want to sell us a monkey's sandwich. The drifter laughs. Believe me or not, I was kidding. I don't care what you think, with a threatening voice the old man says, we will report all this. To all your MIs from zero and to God knows whatever number, the drifter adds. So it is, says the lady professor. Go ahead, report everything. Are we done now? Again the Cambridge lady and gentleman exchange glances. What is your opinion? The old professor asks. The drifter ponders for a moment. When was the bottle found? Two days ago, replies the old man. Where? Near Sardinia. A courting couple was sailing in a small boat and happened to see someone pitch a bottle through the porthole of a luxury yacht. And then they immediately. Yes. Who are they? State. Secret. Okay. You're sure the message is written in blood? The two Cambridge scientists nod. 100%, says the older one. Diana's blood. The researchers look at each other. We don't know, admits the lady professor. Check it. The scientists laugh. That's not so easy, admits the professor. Smiley people can do everything, says the drifter mockingly. The lady professor smiles. Only in English spy novels. Here, our hands are tied. The message was found in a Don Perignon bottle. How do you know that? sputters her companion. Your legendary 007 always drank their poison. Don't be silly. The lady professor is jotting things down in a little notebook. This is the fourth thing, she says. That is only known to the person who wrote the letter, or to our dear, late, princess. May God have mercy on her soul, adds the drifter. Her colleague waves his forefinger. That's right. 
What do you drink? asks the female professor. Plain water from the tap. Tell that to someone else, the old man sneers. He points to the trailer. Where do all these empty beer bottles and your rolls come from? Ha ha ha. The bottles I collect here and there for the deposit. The professor clears his throat. Dum, dum. All right. Please tell us how you knew that the message was in a Don Perignon bottle. Well, the drifter smiles. Didn't they tell you that I am clairvoyant? And that we will, says the lady professor. Also report. That's right. The drifter points to a half-open window on the first floor of the Rijksmuseum, where the museum library is located. That is not necessary. Those who sent you are listening in to our conversation. The two Cambridge scientists turn their gaze in that direction. A bald head disappears from the opening. We will still report all that, says the professor. Please don't, poor me. They will give me a bad mark for my bad behavior again and then I will really have to become a drifter. The professors look at each other and smile. Now turning serious, the drifter says, you can solve the mystery immediately by checking if the letter was written in Diana's blood. The professor shrugs his shoulders. That's impossible. The drifter raises both hands. Then I can't help you any more. Please tell us how you knew that the car crash would take place, says the lady professor. The drifter gets up. Your top agents sniff too much during their visits to Amsterdam and when they fall asleep babble rather than snore. The old man nods, obviously, but that doesn't mean that everything they say is true. Where there's smoke there is fire. The female professor spreads her hands wide in disbelief. It can't be true. The drifter gets on his bike. What can't be true? That Diana is still alive. Who is in the morgue then? Her colleague asks. That is something you can verify. The old man brushes the comment aside. That is not necessary. It really is Diana. We are only interested in who staged the car crash. The cyclist with trailer prepares to leave. Then, farewell. The couple stand up. Please, they call out. Tell us a little more. All in good time. All in good time. Hurry up and find out who is in the coffin. You still have two days left. The drifter leaves the garden of the Amsterdam Rijksmuseum.